Hey everyone, in today's video, we are going to go over three different phrases you should start incorporating in your math block to have students do more math talk. We have learned over the years that while it's important for students to be able to solve different problems using their mathematical reasoning, we also know that it's just as important, if not more important, that students can actually explain that mathematical reasoning and the way they solve things to make sure they have a deep understanding of mathematical concepts. Now, as students get older, they are able to type out their explanations and understandings of why they solved something a certain way, you know, by typing it out or writing it on paper. But in K through two, that's not as much of a possibility, so we rely heavily on talk to get students to explain their understandings of these concepts. When they explain their process and reasoning, it gives us a little bit of insight into what they're thinking and what topics we may have to work on further, as well as seeing what concepts they've already mastered. So using these different math talk tools is also a great way for teachers to really kind of assess their students' knowledge. If you've seen my videos before, then welcome back. And if you are new here, my name is Susan Jones. I'm a former first grade and K through two literacy teacher who now spends a lot of time here on YouTube sharing tips, ideas, and strategies for K through two teachers just like you. Other than creating videos, I do spend a lot of time creating teacher resources for grades K through two, as well as subbing at a local K through two school while I am getting my master's degree in curriculum and instruction. So if you're ready to hear these three math phrases to use in your classroom, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and let's dive in. The first math phrase you should really try to incorporate in your classroom is what did blank do? Blank meaning the name of a student. When we pose a mathematical question to our class, let's say I put a story problem up on the board and I want students to solve it, naturally I'm going to ask a student or two to share their answer. When they share their answer, I ask them to explain more, tell me more about their process. So really that's another math phrase you could use. I'm not gonna include it in this video, but make sure you're asking them to explain or tell me more as well. Because when they're doing that, they are explaining their process. And it's great because we know in math that there are many different ways you can come to an answer. But after they've gone ahead and explained that, instead of me even saying, yes, that's correct, no, that's not correct, the first thing you can do is turn to your class and say, who can tell me what Shonda did? Or what did Shonda do here? And this way your students have to explain what Shonda did, not what they did themselves. They may have solved it a different way, but I want them to restate and explain the process that Shonda went through to get the correct answer. And you don't wanna ask for this just one time, you wanna ask this over and over. So you might have student A go ahead and explain what Shonda did, ask another student, ask student B and student C and have them all restate what Shonda did. Now, if they start to say something that was incorrect or something that Shonda didn't actually do, I try not to clarify it myself. I try to put it back on Shonda, the student who shared the problem and ask her to clarify. And of course, if they need my help, I will step in, but I really try to have the student to student interaction to teach one another. Not only does this type of math talk promote a deeper understanding of different processes, like I mentioned, mentioned earlier, but it also promotes really intense listening that students will have to do as this becomes a regular process in your classroom. Students will get used to the fact that as the teacher, you're not just going to call one student up here, solve it, and then go on to another problem. They need to really be listening to what their classmates are saying and how they're explaining it because they may have to explain it themselves. So what did blank do is a very easy and powerful one to use. All right, math phrase number two to use in your math block is do you agree or disagree? Why? Again, this is a great phrase for getting students to really listen intently to one another because they're having to decide, do I agree with what you said? Do I not agree? And you have to explain why. But also this is another one where the teacher, you are not jumping in and saying, yes, that's correct, or no, that's not correct. You are letting the students decide and putting the learning back on them. Do you agree with the way that Bobby solved this? Do you agree with what he said? Is there anything you might change about what he said? Why, why not? And you're always pushing for that explanation as to why or why not to back up their reasoning. In K through two, this can be a simple thumbs up or thumbs down process as well. As students come up to the board, they're looking at the way someone solved it, they're listening to their classmate. Thumbs up, do you agree with this reasoning? Do not agree with this reasoning? Let's talk about why. And just like with the previous phrase, if a student disagrees and then they explain why, I try not to interject first. I try to see what Bobby might have said. If Bobby got the wrong answer and another classmate disagrees with their answer, answer and explains why, I want to ask Bobby now, 
hmm, what are you thinking? Do you agree with that? Let, let's clarify this a little bit more. I again try to put it back on him. This is important for students to realize that number one, you are not, again, as the teacher, the all-knower in the classroom. Students in the class have the answer, they know the answer, they can solve it in different ways, and your students can learn from their peers. This is also a great way for students to practice agreeing and disagreeing with one another and having productive, even if they're difficult, conversations in a safe environment. All right, and math phrase number three to incorporate in your math block is, could you have solved that a different way? Now, I want to point out I very purposely did not put did you solve this a different way, but I put could you solve this a different way? Because many of your students may have solved it the same exact way Bobby did, for example, and if you ask them did you solve it a different way, it's an easy no for them. And they don't have to further the conversation. If you ask could you solve it a different way, is there another way to solve this and find the answer, then you have students thinking, okay, even if I didn't do it this way right now, here are some other options. And what's great about this one too is you can actually piggyback some of these phrases. So when someone then explains a different way you could solve something, you could then ask another student that phrase one and say, what did blank do or what did blank say? Restating that answer. Now all of these phrases might seem really simple, but in most math blocks, it is typically the teacher showing students how to solve something, maybe asking for some student input here and there, but then it kind of moves on. Or that teacher holds the all-knowing answer place and they're like, yes, this is why, or no, this is how you fix it. But if you keep these three phrases top of mind, you can produce much more effective math talk in your classroom where students are building a much deeper understanding of the concepts. Just a little tidbit of advice for what I would do is I would probably print out three little speech bubbles and I would write the phrases on them. So we have, what did blank do? Do you agree or disagree? Explain. And could you have solved that a different way? You can cut those out on a piece of paper, paste them on the board, and that will just be a nice reminder to you and your students of the types of conversations you will want to have and the questions you'll want to ask during your math block. All right, there you have three different math phrases you can take and use in your classroom right away. I hope this video was helpful for you. And like I said, while each of those phrases might seem easy and they are easy to say, it's more of like a reminder to yourself as the teacher to make sure you're using them. Let me know which of the phrases you're gonna take and use in your math block. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. And right now I have new videos coming out on Thursday and Sunday mornings. See you in the next one. Bye.